Now, most of my clients have heat map software installed on their site, but they don't know how to use it and how to get insights from them. So in this video, I'll teach you how to read and analyze website heat maps so that you can get valuable insights and learn more about your visitors' user behavior. <laughs> Hello, data people. I'm Robert from Clicks Don't Lie, and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. So let's head to Hotjar, which is the tool for that I'm going to use for the heat maps. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have something else. It's going to these lessons will be applicable to all the heat mapping tools. So what are heat maps? Let me show you a few examples. So this is a scroll map and this will tell you how far people have scrolled. So the bluer it gets or the darker it gets, the, the less they've scrolled. So here you see 100% scroll and here we have already a big drop off and then we have 30 and so on. So it gets like deep blue. This is like ocean colors, right? And here you basically have nothing. Then another popular heat map is a click map. And here you'll notice all the clicks that people have clicked around here. So you, you'll be able to just follow along like that. And heat maps can give you answers to questions such as, are people clicking on your main elements, CTAs and links? Or maybe do people get distracted by non-clickable elements like images? And then are people seeing your important content or maybe they never scroll that far enough? And just in short, if we talk about how to set up heat maps, usually you just install one script on your website, uh, be that if you use Google Tag Manager or you just directly install it. It's super easy and you don't need to know any coding or anything like that. You just copy it. Uh, all the tools give it to you. And uh, I've been using a lot Hotjar, but there's another free tool from Microsoft. It's called Clarity. You might want to check it out. It's uh, totally free and you get all that data. Now, one thing I want to mention once you install it and you start getting some uh, page views that you need to wait long enough that you have enough data. So for example, here for uh, desktop, I have about 200 sessions and that's that's not really enough yet. Uh, if you get somewhere closer to uh, 500 or the perfect number would be around 1000. But I know if you have a smaller website, it's way too long to wait. So if you start getting 250, 300, you can start looking at it. But if you have 23 or 50 or something like that, do not trust it. Because if you look at mobile here, uh, the clicks are all over the place. I cannot trust that this is actual data because one active user could be creating oh, most of these clicks and it just doesn't give you the right image or the, the right pictures. Definitely let it run long enough so that you have enough data. So first of all, let's start with the click map. And usually first thing I look is the top clicks where which elements get most. So if I look here, okay, this one gets some clicks, four clicks. Let's scroll down. Do we see anything? Um, okay, this element definitely gets most. You see, it gets like red when it, it has most clicks or a lot of clicks. Here also, th this whole element just gets a lot of clicks. And uh, then if I keep scrolling, yeah, that, that element is definitely the highest one. So now I could look at this. Okay, well, this element is like halfway the page. Maybe I should actually push it up because clearly this is what people are most interested in. Now, in some cases, you might not want to do that because you need to explain first and then only this element will make sense or this content makes sense. So uh, really think about it. But in my case, I might even experiment by putting it uh, the second on the page so that people just have easier access and they get to get to the content that is useful to them. The second thing I like to look at in click maps is where people click on uh, non clickable elements like here. I have four clicks on this one, but it's not a link. It doesn't look like it's clickable, but for some reason, people are still clicking on it and clearly on in one spot. So does that, is this just a coincidence? Like these two, these are clearly nothing that people uh, on purpose click. Cause you, you know, sometimes if you're reading something, you're just clicking around, help you yourself to read through it or skim through it. So I would definitely look into it. If my testimonials would have a lot of clicks, I would, uh, right now they're not clickable, but if they were clicked a lot, I would add, uh, you know, a bigger image behind them, or I would just make it s something more interactive because people are clicking on it. So I definitely advise you to, to just go through the heat map and see if there's any elements that are getting clicks that shouldn't get any clicks. And, and then you need to think about why are they getting. And third thing, for example, here at the top, you can ignore these clicks like on the text and stuff like that. Most of the time, it is not because people think it's a link. Uh, so clearly this is not a link. However, if this was underlined and then you have a lot of clicks on that underlined part, then you might think, oh, okay, well, I underlined this and people are clicking on it because they think it's a link, but it's not. So maybe you need to remove the underline or you just make it into a link if it makes sense. And the uh, fourth one that I like to look is if you scroll down here, uh, I have FAQ section. This 
this will tell me which FAQs are the most interesting to people. So clearly, can I pay with invoice is getting at least three clicks uh, here. Also three. Uh, the other ones haven't been even clicked. So I could at least uh, put these on top of the FAQ. Maybe even talk about uh, can I pay with invoices somewhere in my content since uh, people that reach this far, there's not that many of them. So uh, something I could consider, but it just helps you also see what is popular in your FAQ sections or maybe in your menu links. What are people actually clicking? And by the way, data is not created equal and you should be only looking at data that is relevant to your role. That's why I've created a cheat sheet which shows you the most important metrics and KPIs specific to different e-commerce roles. Uh, you can download it by clicking on the first link in the video description. So if you look at the scroll map, this one is interesting. It starts with red and then it just gets darker and darker. And what you're looking here is for drastic changes in color. So you can see here I have red, it changes immediately to red. It should be more gradual and then immediately to blue. This is not normal. It should be gradual change. What does now, what does this tell me right now? I think a lot of people land on my website on, on this page, but then they leave immediately. They don't even scroll. They just open a link, but they never actually do anything on the page. And you see these differences. This is probably the most, the smaller screen sizes people come and then there's a bigger screen size here and only here people start scrolling you can see there's just huge drop off that that is not normal so once people do scroll here this looks normal it should be gradual change and as they scroll it's just less and less people that will go to the bottom and this kind of tells you already if you have elements here well only 10 percent of people see this element so should i move it upwards especially the element that was important people are clicking so maybe i should move this one higher up so that at least 30 percent of people 35 percent of people could see that instead of 25 that it is now and then sometimes you have situations where if you scroll scroll it's uh, all gradual but then there's a sudden drop somewhere so if you notice that that means a lot of people are leaving like for example here i had 24 and then here already 20 so clearly uh, they're reading this part but then they're not convinced they they're not scrolling uh, even further down uh, so this is something i would need to look into uh, and something if you have similar situation that you need to look if that you know if that content is uh, convincing enough third type of heat map you have here is the move map or i don't know how you call these because i rarely use them and you can see so basically the darker it gets the more mouse activity is there so usually you know you hover over it or you click on it then it gets sort of more red honestly i never use this because i just don't find value and especially if you have a lot of traffic on mobile this doesn't even work there so i i haven't found any value in using it you might just check it out now you know how to get insights from heat maps but just looking at web data without knowing how to turn it into insights will just waste your time that's why you should watch this video next where i'll teach you my six-step system to turn data into insights